Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's time for Twit Special number 173. I Fix It tears down the PlayStation 4. Leo Laporte here. Hello, everybody. It's time to tear down yet another fabulous new tech product. Our friends from iFixit are back, iFixit.com. A wonderful site, the uh, ultimate in uh, repair guides for everything, uh, from refrigerators to iPhones, and yes, even game consoles. Joining us right now, uh, Gwendolyn Gay, you probably recognize her from the iFixit videos. Hi, Gwendolyn. Hey. And with her, we've got technician Walter Galan. Uh, Galan. He is going to tear it down. Oh. You're going to tear it down, Walter. Tear this thing apart. <laughs> so uh, has this, this uh, first of all, I, I'm going to follow along. I've got my PlayStation uh, 4 right here, sealed in the box. And I'm going to start off by clipping my, my wrist uh, grounding to the microphone because everybody knows that the microphone is well grounded. <laughs> I'm not going to tear this apart because unfortunately it's Shannon's and she hasn't given me permission. But we will follow along. Have you taken one apart before, Walter? I, this is the first time, so we'll, <laughs> we'll find this out. Okay. We're learning together. We're learning right. together. And has this PlayStation 4 been used for anything? <laughs> we turned it on and it does work. It does. That's it. That's all we know. <laughs> Gwendolyn, where do we get this? Uh, we got this one from Amazon. Uh, the one we actually did for the actual teardown, uh, we got from the East Coast awesome. so that we could get it three hours earlier our time. <laughs> yeah, time is of the essence on iFixit teardowns. you got to be the, the – at least you didn't have to go to Australia this time. That's true. Yeah. So, um, you know, we've actually started to hear us about some technical issues, uh, a number of different technical issues with the PlayStation 4. Some people are experiencing what they call the blue ring of death, some overheating issues. But uh, for the most part, I think people are very excited to get the latest generation Sony game console. Let us begin. What are we going to need? I've got my iFixit uh, case here. What am I going to need here? So we've got a T9 security uh, torque screw. Okay. Phillips one. Tweezers. And your... Okay. All your little bits. Got the screw here. Yeah, my 54-bit oh. iFixit toolkit. Exactly. So this so, is uh, this. Uh, usually consoles are not as tightly packed as all the uh, tablets we've seen uh, and the phones. Now, things are usually more modular. Things right. just come out. So go ahead, Walter. You get to it. And uh, Gwendolyn, if you want to narrate what Walter's up to, we have well, two shots. We have you guys, but we also have a close-up so we can see. The best part about this, uh, the first step is uh, no screws. Nothing, nothing required for this. Uh, so we're going to take off that that first. Really, it just pops right off. Right it just off. pops right off. Look at that right there. And you can get to the drive with just a screwdriver. So. Wow, that's really yeah. easy. Yeah. It's really easy. Just pop it off. It's yeah. a nice change of pace from all the tablets we've been seeing with all the glue. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. We didn't have to use a spudger or anything. Nope. No. No good tar picks. Yeah. Yeah. And then just take off one Phillips screw. Now it's a very compact design, very elegant design. So I imagine it's going to be f tight in there compared to say a PC. We'll yeah. find out. Not a lot of space in here. Yeah. Here's your hard drive. How big a hard drive is it? Uh, 500 gigs. All right. So, but you can upgrade it as long as it's uh, greater than 160. So that's a nice thing. It looked like it was fairly easy to get to. Just a screw okay. and you yeah. pop off the top. So a hard drive upgrade on this will be very simple if you wanted to put a terabyte or a couple wow. of terabytes. Do we know if it's specially formatted like a TiVo or is there anything you have to do to bless it or can you just... You just pop in a new one, stick it in, and wow. turn on your PlayStation. Wow, that's awesome. We always like that. Anything that's um, user-friendly that we can just mod ourselves. Yeah, no so. kidding. It seems like Sony intended it that way. I mean, that, that was the easiest. That was the first thing you do. Right. And actually, um, this is something that was, we also had this type of drive that was um, user-friendly uh, in the Super Slim. I is it a SATA drive? Yes, it's a uh, SATA 2. SATA 2, not SATA 3, okay. So then you take off a, uh, so you take these warranty void stickers. Those here. are fun. Oh! <laughs> you see them right there. All right, we should tell people when you're removing the warranty void stickers, you are 
voiding the warranty. <laughs> Wait a minute. It looks like you've got a special technique for removing those that doesn't tear the sticker. Have you ever put it back on? Well, if, if you put it back on, I, I don't know if you can read it, but you can see the word void there. So. Oh, I see. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So you have voided the warranty. Oh, well, you weren't going to return it anyway. Actually, that is probably a good word of warning. Given the fact that there does seem to be some percentage of these that are DOA, it's probably not a good idea to do this unless you're really willing to void your warranty because Sony could reasonably say, no, you opened it. But you didn't have to do that to take to put a new hard drive in. No. Nope. Good. I like that. Yeah. Uh, so now we're, um, once he takes those off, it's just a couple of torque security screws. Um, I believe, right? Yeah, just a couple of T9. There should be mm -hmm. four on the on the back of it. Okay. Quinlan, why do people use Torx screws? Are they better? Are they less likely to 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 strip? Um, I don't think they're less likely to strip than a, say Phillips. Right. Um. I mean, they used to use them because nobody had a Torx bit. But now everybody's right. got Torx bits. So it was a proprietary screw first, and like um, you know, Apple uses their pentalobe now. Right. But, um, but even the pentalobe is becoming more common with the drivers. We have we have drivers, but then there's other there's right. other drivers out there. So Torx is is not as proprietary as it used to be. So it, it does discourage people from getting inside their right. devices with Torx security. But if you have our Protect Toolkit or a driver, it's not going to stop. Yeah. And he's just going to pop that off after the four screws. Well, that was easy, too. Yep. First panel. Yeah. Yep. Very simple. So you might notice if you're watching uh, that the uh, there's a light, slight lag between the two different feeds. The Ustream feed's slightly slower. Uh, there's just some latency. But that actually is nice because we can go back and see you do it again. It's almost like our instant replay channel. So that works out quite well. So this is a very nice, very clean layout, and you can tell that one of their chief concerns is cooling. It's a big fan. Yeah, right we got there. a huge fan. Okay. And it looks like airflow baffles designed to make sure that the uh, air from the fan goes to all the right places. Yeah. How big was our this fan again? This is a this is a design by Sony. It, it's a big, you know, the larger, of course, the fan blades, the quieter the fan will be. It can rotate slower and get more uh, air movement. So I think that, you know, in a device like this, you want to see, a big fan is, is a good idea. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Did you notice how noisy it was when you started it up? Not at all. Very quiet. I mean, compared to the first uh, generation PlayStation 3, which sounded like a wind turbine. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't use my original Xbox 360 in anywhere that <laughs> there were people because it was so noisy. <laughs> Felt like a jet airplane about to take off. <laughs> Have you played with the PS4 yet? No, I haven't. It's just sitting here sealed in front of me. I'm very frustrated. Uh, such a tease. I know. <laughs> but I, got, I ordered the Xbox One, so by the time we do this next week with the Xbox One, I will have played with the uh, Xbox One. Okay. So now what are you what are you pulling off there? Taking off the power supply. Okay, that's interesting. Close up of the power supply. All right. So, so this has an integral uh, power supply, or does it also have a big wall ward or? Uh, no, this this is integrated into it. This is it. It's zero. That's that's bad for cooling, but nice for users. We don't have a big old clunky thing on the floor. Exactly. There you go. Easy enough. That's it. That's all it took to replace the power supply. Wow. One. Go. Thank you. And uh, anything to say about the power supply? Any anything particular about it that you note? It's nice because it's uh, universal. So it's 100 to 240 volts, which means it works worldwide. No need to buy adapter. You know, just all you need is. An adapter. That's here. nice. Yeah, and that would make sense. I mean, Sony's not going to make something that will only work in the U.S. or only works, you know, in Asia. I presume it's a proprietary design, though. It doesn't look like something we could buy off yeah. the shelf. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to the optical drive to get that out. And that's, again, just a couple of screws. A Blu-ray disc again. Sony did that last time, of course. 
Blu-ray is Sony's technology, but I understand that the, it doesn't, like the Xbox One, it doesn't have 3D capability out of the box, as, as, as far as I understand. I think you're right. Yeah. Not that I care about that, but... <laughs> do you have a 3D TV? I do, but I hate 3D, so... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it, it, I think both companies have said that they will offer... That while they have the capability, the software's not there, but they will offer an update that will make Blu-ray compatible, uh, 3D compatible at some point. Here we go. This is the. This should be the Bluetooth antenna. Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Let's see. Just put that out of the way. Let's get the. So Wi-Fi built in, and is it 802.11? Yes. A, B, G, and N. No AC on it. No AC. So if you're just tuning in, we're tearing down the new PS4 from Sony. Uh, Gwendolyn Gay with us, Walter Galan, Galan the uh, technician doing the actual labor. Gwendolyn just enjoying the view. <laughs> well, like, like I said, you know, we do our tear down sometimes remotely um, so that we can get them first. So this is this is exciting for me. It's nice to see up close, yeah. See it up close, yeah. yeah. So. And a number of people asking, Lawn Dog particularly in our chat room, why SATA 2? Why not the faster SATA 3? And I... I, I just presume that was for cost savings. Remember, this is only a $300 uh, unit. And in order to keep the cost down, that maybe they've made some sacrifices. It may be that disk I.O. was not a priority. Probably isn't, given the hard drives they're using. You do now. Are you using that special uh, mat there, Gwendolyn? The this the yeah, this mag is magnetic mat, um, and so it's it's got grids on it, so you can keep everything intact. Um, I'm just making notes on what the screws are going. To. You actually are writing it down as 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 Walter goes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's cool. By so the way, making, just making sure that uh, we can put it back together correctly. Four hundred dollars. I'm sorry, not three hundred. That was wishful thinking. Three hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. According to Wikipedia, that one of the advantages of Torx screws is they, they are less prone to cam out. You can't over tighten them as much. Um, they're designed to prevent over tightening. And they're flat, they're flush. They don't have a big knob. Developed in 1967 by Cam Car Textron. So I didn't realize Torx had been around since 1967. That's kind of amazing. 67? Yeah. yeah. They're at ISO standard uh, 10664, the hexolobular internal. Okay, sure Apparently it's common in uh, bikes, bicycle brake systems, motorcycles, automobiles, and of course Apple. Apple's the first to use it in any device I'm aware of. They, but they have never been, you know, proprietary in that sense. It is an ISO standard. Which is nice. Yeah. Torx head screws resist cam out better than Phillips or slot head screws. Phillips heads were designed to, ca designed to cause the driver to cam out to prevent over tightening. Torx heads were designed to prevent cam out. Which means... Uh, well... Because they were using automatic screwdrivers that limited torque and couldn't over tighten, they didn't have to worry about it. And they're, yeah, yeah, and they can set this specific torque. That's right. Burke McQuinn, who does all our repairs here, is an expert on this stuff. So that is the optical drive you're taking out there, Walter. Drive here. Um, it's got a unique locking mechanism here. Safe connector. And I'm tr trying my best not to break it. So, Walter, have you have you been inside a PS3 or a PS2 before? Completely, yeah. Yeah. So this, so you 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 would recognize anything that Sony's done before. This sounds like something new. This is new to me. I've seen this type of connector, this type of connector, but not this new locking mechanism. Um, it looks like you just pull it out, but these things, it's so fragile. Gwendolyn, this is where the expertise and the experience of the iFixit crew really is handy because somebody like me I just go oh, let's just yank it out 
Right. And they're, they're patient. Let's not do that, Leo. <laughs> they're very patient. Reassembly is key, right? That's always where uh, you, you end up with a few loose screws here and there, but as long as it works in the end. What you don't want is a broken connector. No. Exactly. That's definitely where the patience comes in. Yeah. Yeah, it always blows me away to watch you guys, the patience you guys have. Just working at something until it comes out. So this type of connect, I don't know if you can see it here. Uh, you pretty much just push out one side, push out one side here, and then one side, the other side like that, and just connect it comes off like that. So you also have to to be to be good at this. You have to have a, some a lot of mechanical aptitude to kind of be able to look at a part and kind of understand how it works, so you know where to push or where to pull. Exactly, because if you uh, push or pull in the wrong direction, then you're done. So what you see here, this is the optical drive board here. Right there, it's it's attached by a couple. Of ribbon cables there. Yeah, we have a close up on the tear down as well. So, in the past, with uh, PlayStation 3s, if you ever wanted to replace your Blu ray drive, you'd always have to transfer over this board. So, I'm, I'm assuming the same would be for the PS4. If you ever want to replace your Blu ray drive, just transfer this board. Yeah. Okay, so now pretty much almost done here. We just have a fan. The board. Uh, the motherboard and the case. That's it. Wow, this was way too easy. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's not that bad. I think I struggled more with the PlayStation 3 in, in the beginning. Uh, lots more parts. I'm guessing this is going to get a very high repairability score. It's got an 8, if I'm not mistaken. 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10, yeah. That's pretty good. Why not 10 out of 10? It seemed like that was very easy to get into. Uh, Torx security screws. Oh, you see? Yeah. Just use regular <laughs> screws. <laughs> that's ah. boy, that's a minor thing. It just means you have to have the iFixit kit. So it's exactly. a ten out of ten for anybody with the iFixit kit. Ten out of ten <laughs> for anybody with that. <laughs> the iPad um, Air repair score that we uh, did last week or a couple of weeks ago was two. Yes. Two. That's mostly due to the glue. Yeah, two There's due to glue. Re reassembly when you're talking about glue is just almost yeah, yeah, impossible. So. Almost. We're watching the uh, PS4 tear. This was so much easier the P than the iPad Air. The PS4 tear down uh, from iFixit.com. Walter Galan is uh, doing the screwing and uh, Gwendolyn Gay watching and uh, keeping track of where all those screws are going to go back because, yes, they do put it back afterwards. And you see, she's, she's got the... Uh, I fix it magnetic uh, pad that captures the screws, and then she's using. Is it a grease pencil, Gwendolyn? Uh, yeah, it is. So you can uh, do a little erasing if you mess up. You can mark it and reuse it. And what a great idea! That's a that is a nice innovation. I got to order one of those. We're going to be using um, this PS4 for all the repair guides that we're going to be making. So we we definitely want to make sure that we're putting it back together correctly. <laughs> well, and also really true that uh, the, that this is. Uh, you know, there's one thing everybody's going to want to be able to do, which is easily upgrade that hard drive. That's mm -hmm. nice that that was so easy and didn't void the warranty. It does not require any special screwdrivers or anything. Well, I guess you need a Torx screwdriver for that. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. No, tools. a regular one. Yeah. Yeah, I fix it, Jeff. Send me that magnetic uh, thing. I need that. <laughs> need That's that, the problem with getting the tools from I fix it is then you think you can do it. And you start taking stuff yeah. apart. <laughs> some of some of the confidence can come from knowing that you have the right tools. So. It really does make it a lot easier. And then and then watching the videos on iFixit.com is really helpful. For me. <laughs> we had a caller on the radio show. You know, she had an old HP laptop. The screen had died, and she uh, was able to find it on eBay for eighty bucks. And oh, she wow. said, "I'm just going to take it apart." And I said, "That's great." She said, should I buy a new computer? I said, you could use it as an excuse to, but if the part's 80 bucks, keep it for another year. And uh, then, you know, you save up some money, you can buy a little bit better computer. It isn't, it isn't so bad. It's nice to be able to have that power to do that. This looks really well designed, I have to say. They put a lot of time into this. Yeah. Uh, something that I found interesting about the design, the hardware design, is they used a software guy to design it. Um, so he's thinking future tense um, games and the way we use television now. 
So, um, so def definitely a lot of thought and coming from a different area. Uh, from a designer. Yeah, so. no kidding. I mean, usually the designers are, are graphic artists uh, or they have a product design experience, people like Johnny Ive. Uh, but for a software guy to work on this, that's very interesting. Designing the hardware just so that it could be, uh, keep up to, with everything right. that's hopefully in the future because these don't come out, you know, every year. Yeah, well, that's an excellent point. I mean, uh, the consoles are supposed to last 10 years. Sure. And yeah. what's, what's the world going to be like 10 years from now? It's kind of hard to even imagine. <laughs> Did we miss a screw? Maybe? Prowler in our chat room says he, he likes to take pictures as he tears down. I think that's a great practice, uh, to take pictures before you take apart uh, each stage of the way. And I, I know that's really what you get at ifixit.com is those step-by-step -step images. But I think that's a very good idea. And users uh, like him can definitely come on and do their own repairs. Uh, we're, we're a wiki, so that he, can, he can definitely uh, do his own repairs and upload his photos on the repairs that he's doing. I really like that about it. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, the right to repair is extended to the, the right to show how others had to repair, too. So exactly. there are a lot of repair manuals in progress on your wiki. Um, people can help out there. And it's a really broad range of uh, devices from vacuum cleaners to headphones to Buick 2002 Centuries. Yeah, we've everything, and it's, and it's continually growing, which is wonderful. People are sharing their knowledge. You know, you may not know everything about everything, but if you know a little bit and you want to share it, um, it, it helps out everyone. And we, we're always, you know, it's free. So the knowledge will always be free. I really love that. I just, it's a really great model for a business. I mean, you make your money selling the, you know, the tools, the, uh, the parts, and then you give away all the information people need to do it themselves. It's just fabulous. It was, it was an easy thing to get behind. Yeah. <laughs> I feel the same way, yeah. Um, so where, where are we now, Walter? I'm trying to remove this. This is the fourth panel, the very last this one. This is the last panel off. here, but I think, I, I have a feeling there's a screw hidden somewhere. Yeah, you can kind of tell it's attached, huh? It's attached, and I, I got it so if you can see it. I mean, I got that off right there. But back uh, here, don't pry it. <laughs> Don't pry it. Patience. Here, so just have to. Once I figure out what that thing is, it's not that difficult. Like this was not that bad to pry off. So that means oh. there's something else holding it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There. You got People it. at home are probably hating me right now for uh, doing this. They're probably dying. Yeah. Because <laughs> they know, right? Somebody, somebody at iFixes has done this already. Yeah, uh, you, you all met Walter last week, and uh, he, he was the one doing it in Canada for us. Ah, cool. With our friends at Chipworks. So. That's right. You've got affiliates all over the world, which is nice. Yeah. Hey, Walter. Walter, are you not wearing your, uh, your uh, electrostatic discharge bracelet? Oh, this table's grounded. Oh, see? Ah. See, if you work at iFixit, you got, you got the best stuff. We I never have. wear one. Of, we used to have the screensavers. We would tear stuff apart all the time. Never wore one of these. Because we don't, we don't live in a dry climate. There's not a lot of static in uh, Northern California. So we didn't, we didn't pay much attention to it. Which is probably wrong of us. <laughs> but no, no chips were killed in the making of that show. Actually, I can't say that, actually. <laughs> we set stuff on fire. <laughs> we blew stuff up. All in... All in the name of science, right? All in the name of science and good television, which are not necessary. We're not not necessarily mutually exclusive, but often are. So, so you found the screw, Walter? Found a screw. There was one more there, but I don't think that was holding it in. Um, I'm just gonna have to pry this. So. <sighs> okay, this is where the suspense comes in. Let's get a close up. Don't cut it. Don't don't cut to me, Chad. We gotta watch. He's going to pry it. It could snap at any moment. Plastic bends, but it can only bend so far before. <laughs> that doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> did you read the instructions on iFixit.com, Walter? <laughs> I did. I wrote the teardown. <laughs> well, you should know how the thing comes off. Sometimes, uh... 
Miro was the one who actually took it apart. So sometimes there's a what a hidden tab in there. Or... Hidden tab sometimes. It, yeah. And I really don't want to break this. It's a really nice machine. <laughs> it's beautiful, and you'd feel bad if there were anything rattling in it when you put it back yeah. together. So I just have to see it right now. Um, let's see. I fix its uh, headquarters, world headquarters in San Luis Obispo, California. Really beautiful area of uh, Central California. Good, kind of a small town like Petaluma. Nice place to be. I noticed there's no sledgehammer in the iFixit kit. I guess we're, ex personally. we're expected to provide our own. We have to go buy them ourselves. <laughs> Sometimes we like pulling that out when it comes to a tablet. <laughs> I have an axe in my trunk I found the other day. I don't know if that would come in handy. There you go. <laughs> he's really, it's good, you know. He, it's the he's really working at it, but he's patient. He's not, he knows how far to push it. Do you, do you, Ralph, do you ever get frustrated and just go, Arr! I can't. I can't afford to do that. <laughs> no, you are not allowed. I have to be patient. Slowly. Slowly he pulled, inch by inch, step by step. This is um, a little bit of a window into how long our teardowns take um, when we're facing a device we've never taken apart before. Yeah, you take extra time. You're extra careful. And I know last, uh, last week it was more than an hour to get the iPad Air apart for the very first time. I mean, it, it, can, it can be challenging, yeah. Yeah. No, um, no lithium-ion batteries in this you have to worry about. This one. Yeah. No yeah. glue. Never know. Okay. He's, he's, getting, he's getting there. He's going to burn. Oh, he's going to burn. It's, back here. it's okay. Don't feel the pressure just because there are millions of people watching and the cameras are on. Don't feel any pressure at all. We're Walter's cute. Cole is a cute number. <laughs> no. we got plenty of time. 20 minutes. 20 minutes, all right. You could do this. I have faith, Walter. I hear clips. I hear clips. Yeah. How, lo how long have you been doing this, Gwendolyn? Um, with iFixit? Yeah. Uh, we've been, I've been here since uh, June of this year. When, so. when you're in college, did you ever think that this would be your career, tearing stuff apart? No. <laughs> what What did you study? Um, I have a degree in communication. Yeah, well, you're communicating. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, specifically speech communications. I did a lot of speech and debate. So oh, that's I, cool. uh, I was all about learning how to do things on the fly. Yep. Uh, so, And then um, when it came to electronics, the, the first thing I took apart here, I think, was my computer, which was loads of fun. And then, uh, then I took apart an iPhone, and I was... Oh, that's challenging. Yeah, it was a yeah. little, the, the very first time, it was always nerve-wracking. Yeah. Uh, but again, having the knowledge and the tools gave me the confidence. And uh, once you get past the first one, you feel like you can take part anything. And, and it that's works. empowering. I think that's really great, yeah. Definitely. I, and I would always encourage someone who could, um, who's, who's interested in doing that to just, if they're not wanting to do their own, maybe go to Goodwill and find a device that they'd like to take apart. Um, and, and just build their confidence with devices. Um, and again, with things like warranties, I think the best warranty is knowing how to fix your own device um, and, and having the confidence to do that. So, Walter, are we going to grade it down a point for repairability on this based on this? Uh, it's, it's just it, once you know the, the trick, and I'm pretty sure I'm missing something here, but I almost got it off. There's some clip in there, and it's pretty it surely a clip, yeah. Uh, and I'm pretty sure once I discover what this clip is, I'll be writing to tell people how to do this. Right. And, and, yeah, that's a good point. Repairability doesn't mean how hard it was the first time. It's just how <laughs> easy it is once you get yeah. the hang of it. Yeah. Once, you so, once you've been there and done that, then and or you can communicate it. So, right. And the problems we're having are the problems that other people will have. So we want to make sure that right. we can communicate. First time. Well, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and truthfully, removing whatever that piece is is probably not critical to re repairs in any uh, in any way. We're just taking it off for completeness. There's nothing under there, is there? 
Uh, uh, no. You got the board and the fan. Oh, there's some stuff in there. All right. Yeah. We... yeah. See? Oh, yeah. We want to get in there. So, so it looks like uh, they used... Uh, no, this past this. Yeah, they. You know what? This they cheated. This picture is step. Uh, the step eighteen picture there. All it is is slid it off there. That's not. Uh, that's not uh, how. Yeah, they, they. We got even more detail than that. It probably is that easy. Yeah, they just missing. slid it off. We want to get to the logic board here, which is underneath a, a metal shield it's underneath this plastic. It does. That's the piece that New York Show it. Show it. Don't. Uh, this really? is the piece that Miro uh, cut his hand on in our teardown. You can see his big hand Ooh. Um, in the teardown. Okay, be careful. We don't want any injuries here. Okay. It's all slips, so. It's, it's, oh, look at that. Thank you. Did we break anything? No, we didn't. He tore it off, and no hands were harmed in the breaking of this PS4. So, Leo, that, to be honest, you just have to pull. That's it. Okay. But I, but I think your I, your reluctance I understand and honor, because you don't know. I was reluctant because I didn't know. But if you can see here, I mean, there were clips on the side right there. Yeah. And there were clips on the side right there. Nice job. So you just have to pull. That's it. And I gotta be honest. We gotta add a little suspense at some point in this. This is way too easy otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> so now I mean. We're adding just, drama. Yeah. Now it's simply just removing a couple screws. That it's all about story arc, Gwendolyn. I'm sure you learned all about that in communication. Of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> both, both my kids did forensics, and Henry is now studying communications at uh, CU Boulder. And oh, he really yeah. likes it. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he likes it. He wants to be in the biz. Nice. Yeah. So you could put an SSD in your PS4, but I think with a SATA 2 bus, that might not be a good idea. I mean, you're not really going to get the benefit of the SSD. I mean, maybe you'll get, you'll shave off a few seconds off your loading screen, maybe. Maybe, yeah, but you you really would want SATA 3. You'll saturate SATA 2 pretty quickly with an SSD. I mean, given the price of an SSD right now, it's not worth it. Better off just yeah. spending Be patient. Let yeah. those cut scenes load. <laughs> it's the bus that's, that's the real bottleneck, not the not the drive. Really, uh, Peter and SF says SSD is way faster even on SATA too. SATA two is what six gigabits per second? Three or? Thank you. Thank you You're welcome. <laughs> we don't need to be tearing anything else off. Okay. Yeah, but random reads are not the okay. There we go. There's the uh, there's the shield. So you can see the shield, and you can see the uh, thermal pads right there uh, okay. for the RAM chips. Two, three, four. So yeah. so those pads just uh, are they conductive? Are they thermally conductive? They, exactly. And they so that they go right. They actually touch the chip. Uh, you don't want to touch them with metal, so you touch them with those pads. They're thermally but not electrically conductive. Uh, you still have the pads on. Well, yeah, too. You can see it there. You can see the uh, actual chip markings. I don't know if we can zoom in even more. But... Yeah, I don't know if we can. So the, the chip markings are actually etched into the pad? Uh, well, because they're pressed on there. Yeah. So yeah, isn't that funny? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if we're going to get enough detail through the uh, stream, but uh, that's pretty That's pretty cool. Yeah. So they don't use thermal paste, but they are using some sort of thermal pad that's right on that chip. Uh, they've used that on PS3. Uh, I think the Xbox uses them as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I've got to pull this off. You have a lot more control uh, with a pad than you would with thermal paste. There's always a risk of over-applying or under-applying thermal paste. So you would have to go through all of this to get your fan. Wow. So if the fan dies, it's not going to be any fun. Yeah, that's that's part of the scoring of being right. Um, is, right. is basically getting to the fan. So. Right. There are certain things that you, you could reasonably repair, like the fan. But uh, 
having to tear the whole thing apart just to get there is kind of yeah. tough. I like this board though. It's it's very organized. <laughs> well designed, huh? It's a beautiful design, yeah. Yeah, I don't see a lot of chips. It's pretty amazing now what you can do with. Uh, I don't know how much RAM's on that thing, but you you, you only I only see uh, eight eight chips plus two. Uh, so there are eight chips on the back, and then eight chips on on the front of the board, and they're each five five hundred and twelve. It should be a total of eight gigs. Eight gigs of RAM. Yep. No. It's a very. You're right, uh, Gwendolyn. That's a beautiful design. It's very clean. Yeah. Of course, when you're producing a consumer product like this, I mean, the ease of manufacture is very high priority. Yeah. And it's worth spending a lot of time up front to get something that you can make easily and reliably. It's a big motherboard. It's a huge motherboard. Yeah. Takes up roughly, I'm going to say, I mean... Doesn't need to be that big. There's a lot of real estate, but I guess separating the chips really dissipates the heat. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they reduce the size of the motherboard in future revisions. I think they could. Yeah. So I'm just trying to carefully disconnect this one connector here. Um, and it's at this point in the teardown that you can go through, look at the chip designations, the chip numbers, and get a much better idea of how this is put together. You know, typically, companies like Microsoft and Sony, Apple, don't tell you what's in their stuff. They'll say, well, it's an x86 architecture, but they might not say who makes the processor and so forth. So uh, sometimes they obfuscate those numbers. Are, can, are we, have we been able to read those numbers and know exactly what controllers, what chips are in there? Uh, yeah, we yeah, have a complete list on our teardown there. But uh, right. Step 20 and 21 should be able to tell yep, you. Yep, there you go. Yeah. Uh, there's a AMD Jaguar cars. It looks like Sony made their own CPU with a Jaguar cores from AMD and Radeon graphics GPUs in that uh, large chip there. So we got it off here, and you can see this is the um, the top side here. Wow. That we turned over. Right. And you do have some thermal paste there. Okay. There's a little thermal paste. All right. Yeah. So this is what I was saying. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight round chips here. So there's four gigs on one side. And then four gigs on the other side. And that main CPU, that is a big die. Look how big that is. But there's a lot in there. That's your uh, system on chip. It's yeah. got the AMD Jaguar cores and the... Uh, GPU in there. Right. Very nice. There's somebody saying it looks like an old PC motherboard. It does a little bit with the connectors on the back and big CPU. And then we'll just take it off the fan now. Just tuning in. Uh, Twit's coming up in a few minutes, but right now we're tearing down the PlayStation 4, which came out just a few days ago with the folks at iFixit.com. Gwendolyn Gay is here and Walter Galan. And uh, so far, a pretty easy uh, teardown. A little suspense pulling off the, uh, uh, the last the, panel there. That last panel that protected the motherboard, but it came off. Walter didn't break anything. Here's your heat sink. Let's see the heat sink. Wow, that's wow. Is it copper? Um, the, the bottom might be, but yeah, look at that. So that whole thing is a heat sink. Whole thing is a heat sink right there. Wow, and the fan is blowing right across the bottom of that. Exactly. So blend. Holy cow! It's not water cooled. That's all air cooled. <laughs> that's it looks water. like a block. It looks like an engine block or something. That's big. Yeah. Wow. And there's the fan. One fan in the whole thing. One fan. That's pretty and impressive. It's just held in by two screws. And there, if you had a broken fan, there's where <laughs> there's 
the last thing you'd be putting in. <laughs> last thing is a fan. So, but this is easier even than taking apart a laptop. This is a, this is this is a fair. It looks like a fairly straightforward teardown. Yeah, that's just it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. There's your PS4 teardown. Nice job, Walter. Not one piece out of place. Not one piece. There you go. Very nice. Now we'll have Gwen put it back together. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we have seen a number of these uh, people complaints, a lot of one-star reviews on Amazon, people complaining about overheating, blue, blue rings of death, things like that. Looking at that, uh, it looks like it's well-designed for cooling. They paid attention to it. Um, uh, any thoughts? Um, I, I think that was, that was one of their main goals, was to combat the, the yellow light of death. Right. Um, and, and this this is a... With the heat sink and the fan, I, I feel like the majority of people will will not have that problem. Um, and, and with the problems that we've seen, uh, from what I've seen, it's about one in every 250. Right. Um, so you just hope that you're not one of those one, I guess. And I think so, Sony hasn't officially mentioned anything yet. Uh, right. Bayer. No one at Sony has yet. They're aware it's of the problem. These these gaming consoles. Somebody's saying this is chat room. This is really true. People put them in, uh, you know, cabinets with oh, yeah. with a bunch of stuff around them. They're very they're really in a challenging environment, um, uh, often sealed off. And so it's not really a surprise that I mean they're in a very thermal thermally challenged environment. So you you could see they spent a lot of energy designing for a good cooling for good airflow, um, and I'm I'm sure that if there are problems. Uh, you know, it's it's not because of a poor design. I think it has to do. I mean, sometimes you might not have a cable plugged in. Um, yeah. You think it's user error? <laughs> Possibly. Maybe. Um, there's also the fact that I, I I doubt your PlayStation will work if you don't update it. I right. You need and it's a fairly large download for. I think it's a 500 megabyte download something to begin like with. So maybe something went wrong during the download. Right. right. Um, there's a lot of possibilities out there right now. 549 one-star reviews on Amazon right now out of 1,909 total reviews. Of course, if you got a DOA, you're going to immediately run to Amazon and uh, and write about it. So uh, we'd expect a higher percentage there than normal. Um, a lot of people seeing that blue pulsing light of death. The um, uh, sorry, is 859 megabyte first update. Uh, wow. But I think you're right. I think, Walter, it could easily be a failed update. Uh, hey, you could have a partially brick console. Right, right. So, Although some people are saying it never starts up. Some people are saying it fails after the update. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 And take it back. Anytime yeah. you make a million of anything, and they sold a million in the first day. First day? Yeah. Anytime you make a million of anything, <laughs> some <laughs> percentage, even if it's one-tenth of one percent, that's thousands of machines. Yeah. You know, and you'll hear about it from every one of those people. So I don't. I think it's too early to say whether there's a problem with the uh, PS3. Um, it looks like it's pretty repairable. You said eight on a score of eight to ten, of uh, one to ten. We give this an eight, and uh, hopefully within the next few weeks we'll have a couple repair guides for this. Yep. So, Definitely. Really so nice job. Single component. Wendelin Gay, Walter Galan, thank you so much for tearing down the PS4 for us and taking a look at the inside. Beautiful. As always, elegant job. Now do you have to put it back together again? That's Glenn's job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to see you both. Thank you so much. Next week, we tear down the Xbox One for completeness sake. I hope you guys get that put together because I, I think it's time to play a little kill zone. I think That's it right. is, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Wendelin Gay, Walter Galan, ifixit.com. The, the teardown is online, picture by picture. All the parts, all of it at ifixit.com. And if you want to do the same, you can also get your iFixit toolkit. I'll give you a free plug for that. I love my iFixit toolkit. Thanks, <laughs> everybody. Uh, and that concludes this uh, iFixit teardown, the PlayStation 4.